sort of uh, uh, don't answer this if you don't want to, but I was reading about the the history between you and Dan Maff. You were in a tag team with him for a while, but there's something happened there between you guys. Did you want to go in and, and talk about that, or, or did you want to go into something else? Uh, I mean, just more like a personal thing. Like, I feel like if you put on my family, put on my clique, put on my henchmen, put on my students, and you betray me, then you need to leave. You know, you get out of my circle. Um, that's like if I fuck your wife, what would you do? I'd fucking to get the fuck out of my face. First of all, if you did that to me, I'll catch crabs first and then pass it on and give you the gift that keeps on giving. I wish I was dirty like you, but nobody can be like you, ain't you? <laughs> so <laughs> short the way there. <laughs> yeah, no, look, I, I, I completely get where, you, where you're coming from. And yeah, if someone did that, I, yeah. But um, yeah, look, I just wanted to ask, because like I said, I'd, I'd seen the stories over the years and just so what, while I had you here, I'd ask about it. But, um, you know, moving into you know, the formation of LAX, you know, how did TNA approach that with you about the formation of, um, of LAX? It was really corny. They came up to me one time. I, I wrestled him and Rock Killings in Puerto Rico and me and them off. And and the next day I went to New York City. I wrestled Red Water and Mick Foley was there. And basically Mick Foley say, um, I think I was supposed to say Cole Cabana. And I did something that had the crowd in my hands. And Mick Foley was telling me that Vince McMahon will love that. You need to call him. I said, okay, how? Because I don't know nothing about that. He said, well, I'm going to give you a number and then talk to uh, Johnny Ace. I forgot his last name, but his name is Johnny Ace in all Japan. He was a talented relationship for WWE. Tell oh, him the, 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 that guy, yes. Yeah. And um, I said, okay, I'm going to call him. So Conan also told me, hey, man, I'm doing something new in TNA. I'm doing a new gimmick. I'm going. I'm leaving um, Three Life Crew, Ron Killings, and, and Raw Dog, Jesse James. I'm going to do something new. It's called the Latin American Exchange. And I was like, okay. So he's telling me about the TNA wrestling business. And I'm like, okay, so right now I'm picking. Which one I should pick, though, the WWE or TNA? I picked TNA. The reason why I picked at that time, though, the WWE was more of a, a political thing of, of heavyweights, you know. And to me, I was fat. I'm, I'm going fast. I don't want to be, even though it's part of the game, I really don't want to pay part of the game. I want to bust my ass and show the people I could do this. So I picked TNA. So I called Conan and told me, hey, I'm in. All right, let's do this. We're going to attack some guy. All right, but first, tell me the deal. Tell me, we're doing a gimmick called the Latin American, American Exchange. It's about, like, uh, we tie up these hillbillies, these, these gringo escarosos, like, give us Latinos the background. You know, it's, it's, it's like real life, actually. You know? But I, I like the gimmick. Um, we took it, but we had little problems because at the time we had Apollo, who was from Puerto Rico. He had some kind of a communication problem, so we can't we can't deal with him. So we had this other guy named Machete. He's from Florida, Independence. But Jeff Jerry was the boss. He was like, nah, he's like my same size. They're looking for someone like the Heart Foundation. And they pick on Hernandez because he was working with TNA back in the days, like the originals. Mm. And after that, so we got together, we clicked, boom, we just got on fire. We start beating up Chris and Vendana's AJ Styles. Well, well, hey man, you kind of, kind of forgot the little, little story in between because you know you originally wanted to holler at me, but me and you know <clears throat> somebody else didn't get along, so that's what panned out. Yeah, we want this to change and become the now one one just to give it choke slams and TNA. But he was too busy, you know, with Donna and uh, somewhere in New York City with with A Train. I can't mention his real name. <laughs> you fucked up, dude. <laughs> You know. So yeah, like Angel did tell me the story that he was uh, sort of earmarked by you to come into TNA in the in the heater role where he, Hernandez obviously took being the big man for the group, um, but uh, Dutch Mantel sort of put a swamp to that. Um, is that something that you find in the wrestling business when you know obviously you've if you've tried to bring in a friend to a promotion or something like that, if someone else has got something, they'll cut the legs out from underneath it, or was that something just? random that happened where it was like two people just didn't get along and that was the consequence. Absolutely. It's kind of funny because I want to injure the company because I want to do an LX like NWO because at the time Conor left. 
So I was telling like the writers, like I want to do LAX like that, do it like LW, you know. So yeah, I was telling you, we gotta we gotta bring in our Spanish angel because from New York City, sing vibe and everything. Of course, Dutch Mantel was part of the writers, and Dutch was like, nah, we got a, a different idea. <laughs> I didn't knew. I did not knew. Okay, but I'm telling you, it's gonna work. No, we're gonna go ahead to Guerrero. And, and, and I said, okay, but we a girl now. Uh, I think Malina, we're going to get Shelly Martinez. And I'm, like, confused. So one day, you know, I called Angel, I told him. He told me, like, just end bombs on Dutch Mattel. And after that, I just, like, I light bulb. I knew because I watched a couple of people from the South. And they told me the same thing. What Angel was telling me. I'm like, oh, I get it now. So I was playing this this game that I actually won, meaning like I'm gonna go to down south, get some information, what's really deal with this guy Dutch tell like his attitude, why I couldn't do this kind of idea because I know it's gonna be a million dollar idea, but yeah. Dutch Mantel didn't want to do it because something about Angel. He didn't like Angels like no nah, Angels too much. I was like, what what that means too much. Like speak English, you know. Like no, we got we we got a different idea. And when the promo tells me something like, "Oh no, we going a different direction," oh, you just trying to change the subject, and then I don't want to tell me the truth. So I already know. Like okay, so I quite told me. Yeah, oh, yeah, he, yeah. Was, was how did how did you find working with Dutch? We really, we really didn't kick it like that. Like it was a writer, but I really didn't speak to him like that. I was just telling. I want to know stories when he was in Puerto Rico and the stories about, you know, Bruce and Brody doing the butcher, but nothing more like, hey, man, my guy was Terry Taylor. That was my guy. He was more of the, the time's relationship, and he was like one of my mentors in TNA, so he was the one that was really talking a lot when it came to wrestling, but Dutch, I really didn't spoke to him like that. Yeah, I mean, because I remember, like, when Homicide called me, he was like, yo, kid, what the fuck is going on with you with that nigga? And I was yeah. just like, and I told him, I said, yo, me and him don't click because he didn't like us. You know, the thing about it, Homicide speaks his mind, I speak my mind. That's why yeah. we click so much. Even though we give each other shit, you know, I have nothing but respect for that fool. Yeah. And he didn't say vice versa. But when I told him, he knew, he knew that, you know, I'm not going to eat shit from him. And he doesn't eat shit from nobody either. So we just keep it 100. 100 means keeping it real. Okay. Good, <laughs> Fuck, man! I'm so glad I have you as a mate. Seriously, dude, I would be lost, Angel. I don't know how I lasted 30, 38 years of life without having you to translate this shit for me. It's not like I have TV here or Netflix or fucking internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind us. Me, me and Angel are friends. I bust these balls all the time, so it's, yeah, uh, it's just a bit of a good time. But... The thing about the thing about me. Okay, let me give you a story. I I talk to a homicide, and the way he talks to me is because we're from the beginning. Yeah. You know, we, the way we talked in, back then is how we talk now. We keep ourselves grounded by talking yeah. the way we talked how we were on the streets. We yeah. don't talk like. Okay, and again, I'm just saying this like. There's guys in this business that we knew from from nobody, and then all of a sudden they become somebody, and they forget where they come from. Yeah, Outside like doesn't forget where he comes from. All right, one hundred percent. Yeah, well, actually, that's one of my fears. You know, just I hate when people forget what they came from. I, I that's one of my fears. I tell yeah. everybody, please don't forget where you came from. Yeah, and you know what? That's the thing. I was interviewing uh, Iceberg. Who is uh, a pro wrestler, former NWA Wildside, NWA Anarchy? He was in the early stages of TNA, and he he's good friends with AJ Styles, and he said the same thing. He's like AJ was one guy who never changed who he was. He's all yeah. even now still he is the same motherfucker yes. that he, that he was twenty years ago, but when he got in the business, and it's to have that sort of mentality, to have that sort of attitude, it, it really speaks wonders, especially for guys like yourself and, and Angel who have been. On national television, you know, you, you've 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 been the height of professional wrestling, but you can still sort of uh, you know shoot the shit and, and understand, um, you know, where you still come from and, and hold it. It's a good thing to see. But moving into that, you know, how did you find? Obviously, you know, the X the, the X division in TNA was something completely different at the time. You know, obviously, there's no weight limits. It, it, there's no limits. But it's, you know, how did you, what did your feelings about the X Division when it first started? Was it something you thought that was innovative or did you think it was just a cruiserweight style called something else? 
I like that because it's very different. Of course, it was it's not, it was it wasn't about weight limits. You know, of course, Samoa Joe came in there, former X Division champion. A lot of people don't real, realize that it's not about guys who's like Great Kali could be in the match and could have win the X Division title. And people will say, no, this is about Kuzui. No, it's not. You know, it's about whatever. You know, but. I think technically, in the, in the view of people and the fans, they see it more as a, like cruiserweight, a junior heavyweight. Because of course, there's a lot of small guys, if you want to say that. But we had a couple of heavyweight guys, and I think it was more like no limits, just dead devil stuff, just don't care about anything. And it was very different for a professional wrestler. You got so many, uh, um, like promotions out there doing different stuff. And I think TNA did a great thing about doing the X Division because to me, that's not a, gr a great, like a trademark, you know, and that's what X Division is. Yeah, absolutely. And it's still going strong to this day under obviously a different name, but you know, a, a, the X Division was something, it was something definitely very unique in seeing someone like Samoa Joe who, who moved like he did, you know, going in, he fit very, very well into that, that style of wrestling. You know, and they've they've definitely had bigger guys win that title over the years, Abyss. Um, but you know, yeah. to to me, X Division was it was some I I took away from it something different. Um, yes. than just like a, you know, the the sort of high flying lower weight class style of wrestling. But you know, getting into obviously the more hardcore style of wrestling that you did. Um, you know, who were some of, obviously you mentioned Bruiser Brody is someone that, that you looked up to and was inspired by, but who else out of, and obviously Terry Funk as well, but who else was someone that you really looked up to in that hardcore style, that more aggressive style? And who did you try and not emulate, but who did you take a lot from? Oh, uh, Sabu was one. Uh, Sabu doesn't know this. Uh, I do a dive. We call it Tope Calhilo. And I put, a ch like, at the beginning, I put a chair. And what I did is, I used to do the dive, and I do a cross body. For some reason, my body was turned into a, a cannonball. And I just told the guy, just stand up and let me hit you with this dive, you know. And and I was all Sabu. I saw Sabu matches. He was doing crazy high fly stuff. And boom, uh, one, the other guy was high booster. Um I'm more, I'm more like like a technical style, you know, but when it comes yeah. to the hardcore style, it will be Sabu, Hayabusa, uh, Mr. Pogo. Uh, that, that's it, but I'm more like like Billy Robinson, you know, yeah. uh, uh, Steve Gray, those European wrestlers. I'm more into the technical style. When it yeah. comes to the hardcore style, I would say the main, the, the main guys, hardcore, I would say... Cactus Jack, Sabu, and uh, that's it. Th that those two. Uh, but I love people like Liger, Masahiro Chono, Kenta Kabashi, Masawa. You know, of course, the hearted original hardcore guys will be the guys from Texas, like Terry Funk, Bruce Brody. You know, uh, even Tony Blanchard, Magnum TA, all those guys, you know, uh, the kid of Koloff. I would say, the, imagine the kid of Koloff have a match with Bill Goldberg. Mm -hmm. I think the kid of will win. I, like, just that's something. She, I do this, and I think, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but but yeah, it's no. something that people need to do. But I would say Sabu and uh, Captain Jack, those are my two main guys. Yeah, and you and you mentioned like obviously being a fan of the technical style and and everything like that, and you know, with wrestling and and over the years, you see a lot of people that sort of want to get into professional wrestling, and you know, I've spoken to a lot of people trying to get into professional wrestling, and they're very much like, I want to get in and hit people with this. I want to be able to do the flips and stuff like that. But how important is to learn the fundamental? And this is probably a question to both of you. How important is it to understand the fundamentals of professional wrestling? Being able to, like, the standard, the intro stuff before you go and start going into all that craziness. I think you got to, first of all, you got to always practice, train, uh, by the way, everything. When it comes to training, a training is very important for professional wrestling. Now, after that, you train your regular training, you train in the wrestling ring. The, the box of a ring is like mathematics. You got to do your measurements and where you're going to be at. 
take a bump. You know, you always got to do stuff, the little stuff when it comes to professional wrestling. Then after that, of course, your character, your gear, um, your music, even music, you know, uh, uh, just the little things that we spend on pro wrestling. You know, I love like going to like ring, shake everybody's hands, especially if I don't even know you, I still will shake your hand because I feel like we are all part of a team. But become a professional wrestler, you gotta have that heart, man, a lot of passion. You always gotta listen. Of course, you're gonna have these, those bitter veterans out there who doesn't know what the hell they're talking about because back in my days, there was a lot of those. And a lot yeah. of people looked at me like, like, give me that look, like, you're never gonna make it. So, of course, you part of my list that I'm gonna prove you wrong because I had a bunch of them. So, you gotta have heart, you gotta have passion, always listen to the right veteran. You know, not those veterans that, that care about themselves, but a veteran that cares about everybody and wants to want to see you grow. It's like my children. I want my children to be better than me when they grow up. Same yeah. thing like my students. I want my students to be better than me. You know, and that, that that's why I am, but mostly it's by heart and passion. How do you find how do you find the training aspect of the side of things? You know, like we, we were speaking uh, about a couple of weeks ago, trying to put this together. Yeah, and obviously you going into the backstage role with NWA. You're in ring career. Would you say that it's winding down? Oh man, I'll be honest. With you. <laughs> my my mind say keep going. My heart yeah. say don't listen to that. Just keep going. But my body say slow down. You know, and uh, the older I get, the wiser, the smarter I'm getting. I've seen everybody's uh, injuries, how 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 they walk. I feel bad because I want to pick my kids up when I turn sixty. I don't want to be walking for the walker because I took a bad bump or some stupidity that I did in the match. So. Of course, everybody tells me, man, you sound like Terry Funk. Always want to retire. Every time you always say you're going to retire, because this, this might be like maybe the 20th time that I mentioned, yeah, I'm done. I'm done. And I did mention that I'm done, but I think I'm really, I want to say done because we got this situation going on with the COVID 19. It yeah. kind of took my spotlight away, but I feel like. I'm more focused, you know, on behind the scenes because that's where my future at. And I remember uh, Dave Hattner and his son telling me, like, think about the future. You know, you did everything what you did, you know. Just think about your future because you're still going to be part of the game. You're not going to be wrestling until you're 70. I don't want to be like Ric Flair or Hulk Hogan being WrestleMania and, and having saggy tits or whatever. I respect those men, but no, I don't want to be like that, you know. Uh, I want to be having a closure and leave in a happy way. But, of yeah. course, behind the scenes, I definitely want that. And I'm definitely have my own goals, have a, a wrestling company. I might buy and do way in the future. You never know. But I'm, I will be part of this game forever. That's the one thing I will say. But as a performer, I, I think I might. I'm going to talk a lot of crap. I might take time off once again because I need my closure. Yeah. But I'm thinking take it two years off. Just performing, you know, to hold up and everything, come back, do my own run, and have the closure that I want. I feel like Donna Taker. I don't know if you see the last dance or the last ride or whatever it's called. Yeah, but yeah. It's, the same, it's the same thing what I'm going through. If you watch The Undertaker, even though he's more of a millionaire than me, he deserves it. But I, I feel his struggle, I feel his pain, I feel everything what he's going through. Man, he talks so much shit because he, you know, how many years he's been having that tape on his shoulder. Hey man, I gotta heal my shoulder. In every video you see him with the t shoulder, yeah, get the surgery, motherfucker, and stop taking that's, shit that, up. That's Terry Funk. I'm telling you, man. But yeah. I did have my surgery. I finally fixed it. Now it's I got an eye problem. That's why I was, you know, I do a little banana kush. Got knee problems. My hip. I don't even know why my hip hurts. Dude, I'm, I'm like five seven. Why the fuck my hip hurts? All, all of you can understand that. <laughs> So yeah, obviously you know why. Hold on a second. You know why? Because I remember. Oh man, I remember when I first met you at Jersey All Pro. You took a power bomb on a the ladder. There you go. See. So don't even uh, don't even say how. What? 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 what, uh, what I don't know why. Yeah, that power bomb. I remember. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you how do you find uh, the actual training of wrestlers, um, coaching and and teaching people the business? Garbage. Is it? <sighs> Yeah, this kind of, yeah, it's 
Nobody's teaching the right way. Some people just stealing, stealing money. You know, you got certain people, they're doing a good job with their business, but you got so many people who are just brainwashing you. And I could do good things to you. Just give me like $10,000. Like, wait, what? But you got so many great schools out there. You know, of course, if you search online, because that's what the technology is, just search online. You see a lot of great things going on with people doing business, but you got to be careful. You got to be very cautious. I was lucky. I was very lucky. Um, you got people that come to me, and what I do, I prove them, okay, this is what I do. I just want you to watch. I, don't, I would not take your money, or I would not say, like, I'm going to take you to WrestleMania. I'm not. I'm going to take you as a, a great performer and a great professional wrestler so you can travel all over the world, maybe go to national television, and, and hopefully you become a, a, a superstar, like a WWE superstar or whatever you want to call that, you know. But yeah. I'm, a, I'm one of those guys that, look, man, I'm just going to make you like a professional wrestler and do the right thing, but I got to show you. I'm not going to take you. You know, your emotions or anything. Yeah, I mean, but I think, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, I think the reason the difference between the wrestling now and the wrestling then, the training, is like when me and Homicide were training, like, be honest, if if I was in a mood and, and I'm saying, hey, what do you want to do? Hey, just let's let's call it out there, man. I don't want to talk about it. Let's yep. just call it out there. Yep. Now these guys got to go over the script, cookie cutter. You know, they, yeah. they can't do anything.